Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I already told you I'm not, not much of a farmer. In fact, outside of theology, the things I probably know best are Star Trek, Cats, and Las Vegas. Well, and full disclosure, probably every song written by Britney Spears or the Spice Girls. I really like the music. But you know, it doesn't take a farmer, it doesn't take an agriculture to the sower in this parable. It's kind of a knucklehead, right? Throwing his seed about, willy and nil. But you know, God is... God's never one to do things as we might expect. Now, while we might have to seek out good soil and good ground and be worried about how many seeds we plant lest we run out before we get to the end of the row, our Lord is, well, he's foolish. But even his foolishness is wiser than the wisdom of men. You see, God, God casts his seed, the gospel, far and wide. He has no concern that he might run out because the gospel is limitless. The superabounding grace of Christ, won on the cross, is for all people, in all places, in all times. And so our Lord shares his gospel without reservation to every corner of the earth. And as we hear this parable, the sort of natural emphasis is on the soil where the seed falls. I've already talked with the kids about the, about the perfection of this seed, that it's wrapped in the very thing it needs to grow into the soil, which is the Word of God. Well, what of this soil? Some of those seeds fell on hard and compacted ground in the path. Or on ground that didn't have very much soil, but just rocky terrain. Or into the briars and the bambles, the ground filled with thorns. And some fell onto the good soil, where the seed flourished and produced grain. We are, we are privy then to Christ's own explanation of the meaning of the parable. And again, his focus remains on the soil. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. All too often when we hear this explanation, we might possibly be left at the impression that soil doesn't change. In effect, there are, what, four kinds of people, right? The hardened paths, the rocky grounds, the thorns, and then the good soils. But if we take a good hard look at ourselves, we'll see that our hearts have at times, in any, all of, any and all of these, sometimes we have indeed been hard with God, we just don't want to hear what he has to say anymore. Other times, we, we've been like the shallow soil. 
when we expect only blessings from God, only good things, the best life now, as you might have heard. But then we become disappointed, or maybe even angry when, when hardship comes upon us. Still other times, we let the cares of this world overwhelm us, consume us, choke us, and blind us to our Savior. And sometimes, hopefully most times, we hear his word, we understand his word, we read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest his word so that it grows deep and strong. It wraps around our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, wraps it in faith, faith toward God and fervent love toward one another. And so how is it that this soil, this hard soil, this rocky soil, this thorny soil is changed? How is it that we are, we are then made good soil? How are our hearts won over, converted from those hard lumps, darkened granite, into fertile soil in which that seed flourishes? This is where God brings his law to bear, to shatter our hardened hearts, to grind the remaining walls of selfishness, of pride, of envy, to cast down and burn away those idols of worldly cares and obsessions. His law to show us our sin and to show us our Savior. For without the full sturdiness of the law, we would never know. We would never pay attention to. We'd never enjoy the sweetness of that gospel. And that is why God continues to scatter His Word over and over and over again to plant His Word deep in our hearts that even though the times that the Word is snatched away or choked out, more is there, more is given, that it may go deep into our hearts, that He may give it the power to grow and to flourish. For he gives life to the seed of his word so that it grows in the believing heart. It is, as St. Paul says at the close of today's epistle, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. See, God's word is not lazy or dead. Not lazy or dead or unfruitful. It is a creative, living word. And it does not return to him empty, but accomplishes his purpose and succeeds in the purpose for which he sends it. And that word... That word is Christ, whose truly and most precious blood, given and shed at the cross of Calvary, we now receive for the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of faith, the good nutrition that our faith may grow deeper and we may grow into him, Christ Jesus, who is our head. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.